Okay, we have a sub zero refrigerator and it's not cooling on a fresh foot side. Came here, I installed piercing valve. It's a piercing valve because the compressor is sealed and I cannot check the level of freon. So I put the piercing valve, I punched the hole, I reverse it backward, it opened, and we can see it's minus 20. It's a lot. If it was, let's say, five, six, still newer sub-zeros will give you error code and you can add freon it's gonna take it like a couple more years but when it's minus 20 that's too much you cannot add freon and actually it's uh, it has to be replaced so in working condition it should be around 12 to 14 12 to 15 we'll do it at the end and I will show it so the first problem you see with the low on freon being low on freon when inside when you open the door when you open the door you see right in the back panel somewhere here in the back panel you will see a bunch of eyes and then it's gonna get worse and worse and then you need to replace according to Sub-Zero they recommend to replace evaporator coil which behind this panel heat exchanger which is that line on the top of the compressor and in order to replace that we have to remove completely compressor and these are the parts this is the heat exchanger and uh, it's capillar tube with a return tube they are all together glued kind of heat exchange i guess that is why they call it heat exchanger and that is the evaporator the old sub-zeros come in the big boxes and every time when you do a cell system repair you must you must replace filter dryer doesn't matter it's 10 year old one year old still for collecting moisture since here we don't have a uh, uh, the, the line is closed, I cannot add or do anything with the Freon, I need to add this one. It's going to be easier for the future work. These are the tools, regular seal system repair tools. I use acetylene torque, high temperature is the best, propane gets too much heat and it damages the fridge. Or, and the rest of the parts here is a pump, I use pump, regular compressor, there is no need to buy $1000 yellow jacket vacuum pump, I use a regular compressor and my weight all of the rest okay there is no need to vacuum it because it's already vacuum i'm just going to close it and in the pages we need to disassemble all the parts before doing the repair first thing first disconnect the power power is off remove it Side. Remove light diffuser. Phillips screwdriver. Some from the newer one, the electronic one, easier to access, but this one has a thermostat, so we're just, just gonna disconnect the thermostat. Yeah. The wires. And so sometimes I have a newer evaporator and I feel bad replacing it still have to replace it but here it's so bad you can see the oil on the side of it so we're just gonna pull out the thermostat in order to be a little careful with the thermostat just gonna go up the thermostat is 
free. Get out. These are the probes for the thermostat. It has a gas inside and I would not damage it because if you damage it then you need to replace the whole thermostat. We're gonna remove the whole rear cover. Now you can see it's a coil and heat exchanger goes all the way to the top. So we're gonna replace the top part of it now. Remove. Typically remove the light bulbs first, not to damage them. Remove screws. This is the heat exchanger which you're gonna replace. See it's all wet. It's really bad. Now it's time to get from the top. We are cleaning this side. Also, this is one of the models which has a thermistor, so we're gonna disconnect it. It's holding by a screw. thermistor, pull it out. Now we'll go from the top. So it had some freon left but still we need to vacuum the rest of it. You don't want to open it inside of the house because it's gonna be an air. And the same thing I connected it. I opened it. It's coming through the gauges. It's going through the compressor, which is pumping it out and it pushing it inside of the tank. So, just open it, it's already on zero, so because it's just a little free on inside, still gonna vacuum it. Okay, since all the freon is removed, gonna remove filter dryer first, staying on the way. Don't mix it. Don't confuse it with the filter dryer for the freezer side. I have done that mistake and I regretted it. Since I know the connection, the lines of it going to the heat exchanger, which is on top of the compressor side. Freezer side always on the left side and this is fresh food side compressor. So since we don't use this filter, uh, Heat exchanger, I'll just cut it. The filter drive, I'm gonna use pipe cutter. Now we're going to remove relief of the fan. We're going to remove capacitor.
don't forget to discharge the capacitor. Otherwise you might get shocked. And we'll remove the relays. For the compressor. And we should be good to remove the compressor. I use it has four bolts around it, and we need to use a half an inch socket, ASCII on this. Use a filter drive, bracket first, so it's not gonna block the video. Okay, remove the all the bolts. I'm gonna remove this thing also, it's staying on my way. Okay, now we removed relay, removed capacitor, relay for the fan, piercing valve, everything is out of our way now. Just make it a little more convenient and we'll lift the compressor. Pull it out. Don't worry about the pipes. Pipes are gonna get replaced anyway. I'm talking about pipes in the compressor. Be careful with the rest of the pipes. So at the end we have two pipes attached to the compressor. I'm gonna use a pipe cutter. Just leave an inch. Leave an inch or so, so you will be removing it later with the torch. I'm not going to use torch here, just going to cut it and then I'm going to reuse it again. The upper piece is for the suction line and the lower piece is for the high side. So one is complete. completely this is a heat exchanger we have to replace you can see it's all messed up it's, it's already dried the insulation dried it's very bad 